What's up everybody? This is Jeff Bernard with Solve Systems and today we're going to go over how to integrate Business Central and Shopify. This is an integration that can take your business to the forefront of selling online. A lot of companies, traditional companies that sell different things uh, from a warehouse and in an industrial sense are now wanting to sell uh, e-commerce. And so this will allow you to send your data from Business Central to Shopify and have those orders after their place sync back to Business Central for processing by your warehouse or sales team. There's nuance to it, um, and we'll try to cover as much as possible for the connection setup. Uh, and then there's some data syncing things to be aware of, which I will also go over in the video, such as setting up the customer card properly and possibly having to reformat the data for your customers to be able to sync those over and products as well. So we're going to go over a few of those nuanced items here in a second. So stay tuned and reach out to me if you need any help with this integration and or setting your company up for success when integrating with Shopify as it's not always very straightforward. And also like and subscribe for notifications of videos that are coming up. Have a good one. So we have a few windows open. We have our Business Central open. We have our Shopify store open. I've done some demo work in here, so there'll be a few things in here. But we want to make sure that we have the Business Central app. You can go find the Business Central app and add it in here. And then we'll want to make sure that we're signed in, so you just make sure that you're signed in to Business Central through here, just authenticates Shopify with Business Central. And then we're gonna go to Shops, New, and then you'll have your online store. So we'll name this online. And then we'll have to get the URL for the store. So you can do that by going back to Shopify, looking at the front end of your store, and then just getting this part of the URL. So we have that there. It's going to make you accept the terms and conditions. It's going to authenticate with Shopify, come back, it's enabled. So we have our item product synchronization. So we can pick which direction we want to sync to uh, or from. So we can sync from Shopify or to Shopify. A lot of my integrations have been to Shopify, but there's nothing preventing you from syncing to Business Central. We can pick item attributes, so these are things like sizes and extra uh, data that are on your item cards. The variant prefix, so this is just the variant prefix that you want to allocate there. Um, auto create unknown, so it specifies whether created in Business Central when syncing from Shopify, so that's the sync from. If you pick that, then you'll have an item template code and then Shopify can update items um, when syncing from Shopify. So again, when syncing from Shopify, your items updated there could update your items in BC. Can update Shopify products. Um, so we'll choose that because if we change something in BC, we would likely want it to change things in Shopify. Item template code. Uh, we want to sync our images to Shopify. Extended text. This is just extended text on the item card. We can click that if we wanted it. Item marketing details. So any item marketing details that you have on the item within Business Central. Item attributes. Again, this is just data that's on your item card. And we can define the SKU mapping, how we want the SKU set up. We'll just click item number for now. Uh, field separator. So if you had a different separator that you wanted there, you can define it. Uh, inventory tracked. So do we want the inventory tracked in Shopify then sync back to Business Central? You may have use cases where you don't want that. You could also click it if you wanted it tracked. So we'll just tick that off for now. And then uh, this would be your inventory policy, so continue selling if you had negative inventory or not. 
we would have status for created products via the Shopify sync. And so we can set it to active or draft until we wanted those items to be active in Shopify. And then action for removed. If we removed something in Business Central, do we want it to be archived or draft within Shopify? Uh, price group. So this is the customer price group on your items. You have your price group set up. This is where you could define if you wanted it to pull from a specific price group. One thing to note here is that on your items, when you are syncing prices, you need to have an end date uh, undefined on the item within that price group. For example, if I had items coming from Houston price group, then in the price group settings for that item, you would want to have no end date so that it would take that value for your items syncing to Shopify. Otherwise, if it is defined, then it's going to take the item card price which if you have price groups set up, then you would want it to take the actual price group. So that's something to note there and define on your items beforehand for doing all this. And so this is your discount price group. If you had a retail large account, you could define the price group discount there. Customer synchronization with order or all customers. Marketing. From Shopify, you probably want all customers, so this would sync all your customers to Shopify. And the mapping by email, phone, bill to info, always take the default customer. You can update Shopify customers. So if your customers are updated in Business Central, you want them updated in Shopify. Uh, auto create unknown customers, so this specifies whether unknown customers are automatically created in Business Central when syncing from Shopify. So if we wanted our customers created in Business Central from orders in Shopify, we could check that off there. This customer template, uh, I don't, you don't have to use it. Um, I'm not gonna use it for this. Default customer, if you wanted a default customer number, um, you could use that. I, I don't use it typically. Um, Shopify can update customers. So this is whether you want to update customers uh, when syncing from Shopify. Order processing, auto sync orders. So this would, uh, when an order is placed in Shopify, it would then sync the order back to Business Central automatically. Uh, order number online. So this would create a sales document whenever the order comes into Business Central and that would have the order number within Shopify on it. Auto create sales orders. Uh, a lot of companies want to do that. Shipping charges. So this would define the account that you want to pull shipping out of within your company. So if you had a shipping account, for example, and wanted to track that, you would define it here. Gift cards sold. So this is if you sell gift cards, um, you would have it which account in your company that is sold out of. Tax priority, this would be your tax settings here. Tip account, if you have a tip account, use it there. I haven't set it up, so I don't have a ton of experience with that. But if you have that use case, please reach out. Um, and so return processing, auto create a credit memo or import only. So that handles your return processing. So now that we have this all set up how we want it to sync, we're going to go test it out. We'll start with customers. We'll verify that in Shopify we don't have any customers other than ones who have already placed orders. And then within our customers, we can verify we don't have customers here. We can start the sync. Make sure that sync is started and we'll look at the job queue. So we'll look at when it last ran, 222. So uh, an error that someone would get if Business Central is not set up properly for this, which I've seen it in very large companies, uh, is your ISO code must have a region or country. So this really, uh, I spent 
an inordinate amount of time on solving this problem initially. Uh, but we can go and fix that. Countries or regions. So we'll go here. And we can go to all of these ISO codes have to be set up. They're not set up automatically. And so if you see that error, you'll need to go and add those ISO codes. Um, and so this one for the US can be added here. Uh, all of the other ones, they are set up. This was a test instance of Business Central. Thanks to Microsoft, they are already set up. So we'll go back and we will run the sync again for customers. So there's a record in the table that it already, this already exists. So that's okay. But one thing that you're going to want to rely on is this job queue. They don't send notifications here. Um, you're not going to see it in Shopify. So if you're not seeing things happening when you want them to happen, go to job queue. And this will have all of your messages for API errors, basically. So we'll try to sync up customers again. And we'll see if that we see that something has come, come through record in table and I really like showing these errors because these are the things that really messed me up for a while and uh, caused a lot of issues for me so we'll see that it pulled back. So it checked Shopify, okay, for existing people, which Helena, these different people existed in Shopify. So it's going to pull those back. And then it's going to sync up the rest of the people. So let's go. So you'll see we have success after a lot of errors. So we can go to see the rest of our people here. Uh, some other errors that I've seen are, and I'm not quite sure how it happened, but with an organization I worked with, um, there were many contacts that the email had a space. And when it synced over, it caused errors for a ton of users. Um, you can always export to, you can go to your customer list and export to Excel or edit in Excel, and that will enable you to filter out for those errors, fix them all at once, publish those users back to the customer table, and then sync. So that's a, a quick way of being able to fix errors on the fly. Um, it's not this integration is not foolproof and it can get very complex very quickly. So if you are running into these issues, please reach out to me. Um, and we'll look at lastly, the products. Cause these are basically the few main things that you're going to want to sync up our products and customers. So we'll go and add items. We can filter out an item number, so we're going to say, yeah, we just want this desk chair in black. And then we'll get that out of there. And we'll see if it's synced. So we don't have anything right now. So we'll try to bring in something else. We want to make sure that we have the online store here. And we'll see that the item has been added here. And keep in mind, whenever you're bringing things in, you'll have the last settings that you to find in here that have been saved. So it makes it quicker. Um, and we can double check that that has been added here. 
and it has. So with all your item details and your price, all of those nifty things. Again, when you're bringing items in, one thing to look for for this section is you may be in a company that's already running, and in that case, your items are going to be set up each item. Try to set up variants beforehand before your integrator comes in, or you'll have to rely on them to sort of get things into Shopify in the way that you already have them set up in Business Central. And that can be complex depending on how your business operates. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, please reach out to me if you're getting stuck on anything because I've been through a lot of these things myself. Uh, and like and subscribe so that you can get more of these videos and hopefully they're helpful. And reach out to me if you have any questions. Have a good one.